Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I want to go over the plants that I have received for the month of November. This is my one and only plant haul slash very special shout out to one of my friends here on YouTube. Not only that, but I also have a relationship with her outside of the YouTube world. The plant that I want to show you guys first, I showed on Instagram that I had received, it's kind of like a story time, this plant in the mail from the UK. Customs checked it. The shape that the box was in <laughs> was not a good shape. It looked like someone had torn into the paper and just wrapped tape around it like crazy. So I knew that that was not what my friend who is Tropical Jungle UK SMA. And I will link her channel below me, but I will also link everything down below this video. Please go check her out. Smiranda, I love you. She is one of the most real people, and I truly honestly mean that when I say it, that I know. I saw this plant off of the channel winding leaf i've spoken about ellen before hello ellen if you were watching she had a plant called i know a lot of you probably won't think this is very exciting a home meal no, rewind girl <laughs> a homolomina homolomina yeah homolomina <laughs> A lot of you have heard of that plant. There is, I know, a homilomina gem or green gem. There is a variegated one that is too expensive. There is also a one called Shelby homilomina. But this one, I could not find in the United States. Now, it may be out there. Guarantee you it is, but it's not being sold. This one was very special to me because I saw it off of Ellen's video and i loved it it was this beautiful green color heart-shaped leaves it is related closely related to a philodendron probably why i love it those are my those are what i'm called to just the whole aracea family and aeroid family i mentioned that in my last video if you're new here by the way thank you to all of my returning subscribers and i also want to thank you if you're stopping by just to listen in I hope you enjoy what you hear. I've been doing a lot of research. So anyways, I reached out to my friend Sma. I like calling her by her full name, by Smiranda. It's just, I'm old school like that. And I asked her, I said, would you be willing to try to send me this plant? Because I don't know where to get this. I don't know who sells it. Nobody here in the United States sells it. I reached out to Australia. I reached out to the UK. And I think they were sold in Thailand, but I could not find a seller of this specific plant, of this homilomina. So, I then reached out to Smiranda. She said, no problem, consider it a Christmas gift. I told her I would pay her for this, I would pay her shipping, everything, and even more because I was so grateful that she was going to try to even send the plant because I figured custom is, Customs will get a hold of it and they're going to destroy it. Exactly, I believe nine days later, eight days later, I was thinking, man, this is gonna be a freaking miracle if this plant shows up at my doorstep. I figured Customs had got a hold of it. I've done a order before from Thailand. That plant got destroyed. It was a Billy Thai in the very beginning of spring this year. It got destroyed because I didn't have a, um, like one of those packets, those phyto certs or whatever they're called for cleanliness or you know what I'm talking about. Usually you pay for it when you ship from overseas. I didn't pay for that. It was another $35 from that. And I was like, I don't want to pay that. I have learned my lesson. So if I do again, I will be able, to, I will be doing that, but not now because it's too cold. Anyways, I know I'm talking a lot. I, so I, walked out to my mailbox you guys <laughs> i saw that there is this little brown package and my heart skipped a beat and 
when my Billy Ty from Thailand showed up, I shook the box and before that I watched Alicia, I can't say her name, Alessia's video. She goes by Lessie's Leaves and she had a box show up as well at her front doorstep and custom said this was against the law or something like that and that um, what you did was wrong and that they destroyed her plant. I'm not sure what plant she got. My heart sank a couple days later, an empty box showed up at my front door. So when I got this little box, I asked Smiranda if she would just cut off the foliage. I knew it was a bulb or a rhizome plant. And if she just shipped the roots and the rhizome that I would maybe have a chance of getting it. So she did. She showed me the plant when she received it. She's like, this is a, this is a beautiful plant, Emily. And um, it's just plain green. It's beautiful. And then the stems, I believe, will turn to be orange. That's why I love the Billy Thai. And she cut off everything. I shook the box and I could tell that there was something moving around in it. I was shaking and I opened the box. And lo and behold, if you are friends with me on Instagram, you will see that picture. There was this beautiful rhizome in damp, not wet sphagnum moss. It was beautiful. There was no, no rot on the roots. This rhizome was absolutely beautiful. It looked in perfect condition. Coming through the cold weather, everything, it was protected. So, very long story just to get to this plant. I do not have any plant or growth to show you, but this is a Homilomina Meiki. And I will post down below me a the name and scientific name. It starts with an, an R, I believe, but I will pin this up so you can see what this scientific name is or the Latin name of this plant but it goes by Homilomina Maggi. I couldn't find this anywhere. And I have this beautiful plant that means the world to me in this pot before me. I could have cried. I, it was, I just couldn't believe it made it. It made it through customs, you guys, and they didn't throw it away. And I was, I'm just, I'm so excited to have this plant. My eyes are like starting to water, <laughs> but, that is one of the plants that I have received. I cannot thank Smiranda enough. Now, Smiranda is into semi-hydroponics, semi-hide, or she does everything in LECA, in water. And she is so, she always says that she doesn't know anything and she's not smart, you guys, but she is brilliant and she dumbs everything down so we understand, so people who are just starting out can understand what they're doing, what not to do, what to do. She's doing this all by trial and error. She is doing fantastic. She's finding things out right and left. There is a 40 minute video or 40 some minute video. I know it may be a lengthy video to some of you, but I sat and I listened to the whole thing and it was perfect. It made sense for English being her second language. She did phenomenal. And I would just highly encourage you to go check her out if you are a little bit interested or if you're just looking for someone else to watch here on YouTube about plants, she has beautiful plants. <laughs> and so that was one of the plants that I got for the month of November. I am beyond thrilled. I know that was a really long introduction. And <laughs> um, so that was one of the plants I got. Another one that I got that's not in the big, huge, plant haul that I had from Shamika, my crazy plant life. She's my girl, she's my plant dealer. I got this from Lowe's. I was on the hunt for another Diefenbachia dumb cane. This is a Diefenbachia splash. I love it. This is one that I wanted in my collection. Oh, she's leaking. I just watered her. <laughs> uh, but um, I got this guy. $10 from Lowe's. Lowe's has some of the best prices I think I have seen. There was the reflector that I was supposed to receive, but that did not end up happening. I'm going to purchase it 
maybe next month. I don't think I'm gonna be doing any plant purchases next month. I don't know, I can't guarantee you. I know we all say that as plant addicts, but this is one I got from Lowe's. So Diefenbachia Splash. So these next plants I got all from Shamika. And some of them are baby plants. Others are not in good condition. And they, <laughs> you guys are like, what the heck? The only reason why I said this is because Smiranda, who I was just talking about, who sent me the plant, the homey Lomina, had a plant that I saw and I, I loved it. Anyways, moving forward, this plant looks like a wreck. There's an explanation why. This is called a, I will link this below. I'm just gonna call it a philodendron rug. Rugteolatum, regloat. Regteolatum. Um, she purchased this plant special for me. She special ordered it. And then once she got it, she goes, Emily, she even warned me. She was like, don't show this plant to anybody because she got the plant. I said I would still take it, even if it was in rough shape. She got it. It was in beautiful condition, but since it was going from her care, so she got that on a Thursday or Friday, this plant, and then she stuck it back in a box to send to me the next week. So it has gone through some cold damage, I believe, and it has been through, been in the shipping too long. So it may look like a hot mess to you. I'm excited to see what else it pops up next spring. I don't think it's gonna grow anymore. It has this beautiful new leaf on it, which I'm still hoping and praying that it unfurls. But this is, there's not a whole lot of information or research on these plants. There is absolutely gorgeous videos on you, um, not YouTube, on Google that I looked up, I searched and I searched and I searched. All I know about these plants is that they grow on the forest floor in very tropical, humid, warm rainforest environments as all of our tropical plants usually do. I know this leaf is totally like wilted. It's not supported, but it's not yellow. My friend Kathleen Murphy, who I always talk to, who is a beautiful YouTuber as well, she always tells me not to cut the leaves because they're not yellow. It just, it's yellowing a little bit on the edges, but I'm gonna leave this leaf on the plant because there is still nutrients from this leaf and photosynthesizing happening, even though it's so wilted and it looks like it's gonna die, obviously, or drop it. I mean, it's so limp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's gonna survive, but it does have this one long, very big leaf. It's like this huge stump, what Shamika sent me. Now this is not a cheap plant, I will tell you that all right now, and I have not seen a whole lot of people selling this one, at least with what I, I didn't search very hard because I knew that Shamika could get this for me, so that's why I don't do a whole lot of researching in where to buy plants. But I told Shamika, it's okay, I'll nurse it back to health, please still send it to me. That is why this leaf looks this way. When she got it, it did not look that way. But I got this guy from Shamika. This is gonna be a really long video, sorry guys. And then I got one of my wish list plants. Okay, Shamika, if you watch this, I am sorry. She asked me not to name this plant, so I'm not gonna name it, even though I believe I know what this plant is. I think it's a philodendron mommy, Mamie or mommy, I don't know how you pronounce that. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. Um, she didn't know if it was a mommy or a plow mommy. They look very similar. I did research on the mommy, so I got a philodendron mommy. Ma mommy, ma 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 ma. I'm saying that a lot, <laughs> but I got this beautiful specimen from her. It is coming out with a new leaf right there. It is absolutely gorgeous. 
and it's underneath my purple and blue grow light. I will not put this underneath a day grow light because I think it's too intense for these plants. I have it in a, my tropical room, my plant room for now. Um, I did a lot of research on the philodendron mommy. They are terrestrial plants, which only means that they come from the earth. It comes out or it's of or it is from the earth so it's going to be growing from the ground or that's how it um, flourishes now if i'm butchering anything i am sorry but i've been doing research here and there on a lot of plants and so if i get them confused please don't shoot the messenger <laughs> but these plants are amazing they are called a creeping philodendron and so that just means that they are going to if they don't have anything to climb on, they're going to creep along the ground and just grow kind of like a weed, but they are going to grow along the ground and then from their main stem, they are going to be sprouting out their leaves. And this guy is absolutely gorgeous. I love this plant. Now I treat almost every philodendron the same. Warmth, high humidity, and bright indirect light or if not a grow light that is how I treat them all they all have the same soil you can see in some of my other videos I think it's a few down I don't know which one it is but if you search my videos you will see my aeroid mix now I switched a little bit up just so that I don't have to buy all of these ingredients and mix them all together I now have two I have um, an orchid mix and then I also have I'm looking over here because my soil mixes are over here in my kitchen and then I also have my happy frog soil I usually use now I also tend to use the oceanic floor soil that comes from the same brand as happy frog Fox Farms I swear by it I swear by it I swear by it I swear by it but that is my other beautiful philodendron that I got Another one that I purchased is a baby one, my Philodendron Silver Sword. It's a beautiful baby plant. This guy, now I was doing research on him. They grow in, there is only a couple places that these guys are found, at least what I could find, in southeastern Brazil, in two states there. There has been a lot of clear cutting being done there and the philodendron silver sword has hastatum 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 I don't know how to say that has been put on the red list as endangered because of the clear cutting that's going on there in Brazil um, a lot of logging has been going on which is causing things to go extinct certain bugs that insects that pollinate to these plants are endangered along with these plants and animals that are down there and it's because of human habitats and logging and mills that is just going on that is going to be endangering so these guys are even though they say that this is a common plant it still does not mean that it's not going extinct or getting in being coming endangered so this guy just like before I said bright indirect light no direct Sun winter time I do tend to give my philodendron some bright and some sunlight in an east window and that in the evening time I have west windows in the back and so I will give them direct Sun only in the winter time when the Sun is not scorching hot so that's the only time but care tips bright and direct light high humidity and really really good draining soil that is has a lot of runoff and that's not gonna leave your philodendrons roots soggy another one that i got this is my second anthurium uh people have said if you're a plant hobbyist everybody owns one it's becoming more popular now, or it's just something that's more common. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> I have a baby plant here, but it is not near as big as this guy will get. 
I got an Anthurium vicii or vicii, however you want to pronounce that. But this Anthurium is called the King Anthurium. Pretty sure everybody who watches me already knows that. This is considered an epiphyte or an epiphyte. Only means that when it grows, it's going to grow on something, usually a tree or a bush, or it's going to cling to something to help support it. It's not parasitic. It's not something that's going to suck the life out of another tree or another plant that is helping it. So don't worry about that. If you have a greenhouse and this guy starts growing on another plant, they're not going to kill it. It's not going to kill that other plant but these guys get huge. Anthuriums are, I, I'm just beginning to touch the tip of the iceberg with Anthuriums. I have a Fastinos giant or Fastino or Fastinos giant who is a slow oh, grower. Like these guys don't grow fast. At least where I live, I don't live in any kind of tropical area at all. Thank you, Washington but I do keep this guy. They are kind of a, I would consider them an understory plant only because they grow on plants and trees and everything. And then they will climb up through the canopy of the forest. And it's really cool because epiphytes are plants that there's something to do with their leaves. And when they are hanging there, they will collect nutrients, water, little debris and particles out of the air and take it into their leaves and nurture themselves and get all their nutrients going through them and i thought that was really cool and so later on when this guy gets a little bit larger i will be getting a support for him inside the home these are usually um, house plants and greenhouse or terrarium plants or greenhouse plants i don't know how you would word that but they don't get obviously as large as they can in the wild or in Florida, um, up to six feet long. I mean, these, these plants are huge, but I got my, finally, my King Anthurium. I've actually been wanting to get him for probably since March of this last year, but I just waited until I knew more about these plants. So, got a little baby, and so you guys get to watch his progress along with me and I cannot wait till he gets bigger. He has really cool fenestration, or not fenestration, I'm sorry. He has really cool patterns still on his leaves, even though he is a tiny little guy right now. But I know I am talking so much. You guys all know I bought another Monstera Peru or Monstera Carcinium, Carcinium. Bright, or well, you can have this guy in bright indirect light, but when you have it in lower light, the dragon-like scales or the dragon look, I think, it looks lizardy or like lizard skin or kind of dragon-like, but these guys do well in low light as well. And that does not mean no light. It just means they don't need to be in bright indirect light next to a window. Um, but this guy is amazing. I love him fast draining soil do not overwater these guys i tend to notice that monsteras this is my opinion it's not anybody else's it's just what i've noticed monsteras are not as forgiving with watering as my philodendrons are even though they're like classified as the same plant or species or however but this yeah i wait till the soil practically dries out before i water these guys again but I thought that was a really beautiful specimen that Shamika had sent me. So I got this one back in the collection and I am very happy. So I got this guy. I have one more to show you. I think that was all of them. Yeah. This guy, I had asked Shamika and there's a couple of leaves dying. This is an alocasia cuculata. Cucolata, Cucolata. I, I'll post all their names below me. And I thought these guys were pretty cool. They are native to China. East China, was it East China that I read that up on? But they are kind of a hybrid. Well, they are a hybrid. They are 
usually planted outside of temples for good luck and um, it just makes a really cool house plant this is another one that i have now this guy does well in almost full sun and it can also survive in part shade these guys like wet feet so when you have them you know i let this dry out a little bit on my moisture meter i will wait until it's a three now if you have a moisture meter i like to stick the moisture meter i did not own one for a very long time but the bigger my plants got and the bigger the pots it was easier to read what that moisture level was and i am very thankful that i got one it has saved a couple of my monstera deliciosas lives <laughs> i have four of them by the way and anyways i will stick the moisture meter in three sections of the pot in different areas close to the root ball or in the root ball i know i've probably damaged a couple roots by doing that and i will read if it all reads at a two or between a two and a three with my philodendrons i will bottom water sometimes i will top water just depending on how dry they are and if the soil inside is actually soaking it up because i make my soil so chunky that sometimes it doesn't it, it's not able to soak it up that is all my plants i got for november i want to thank you all for joining me i am not an expert i'm not going to claim to be one i know i say that every time i am just a girl with her plants and the plants help me i love them and i do my research <laughs> and if i don't know something i will try my hardest to answer any questions yeah i just want to tell you everyone that i love you i thank you so much for joining me and my beautiful plants and my special friends miranda for sending me that plant and i will all be talking to you soon okay so if you're still with me the next couple videos i think i'm going to do a philodendron collection all of the philodendrons i have up to this point which are a lot i may do a one and two part and then a second part i'm going to be doing what plants are still thriving and doing well for my friend roger so anyways i love you all i've talked way too long <laughs>